How does someone like Steve Rude learn to draw, to paint and illustrate to this standard? And what makes his work stand out? We're gonna learn directly from the man himself in this video. Hi, my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. In the last video, we looked at Steve's process for creating illustrations, selecting colors, spotting problems in his drawing. So if you've not seen it, check it out after this one. In this video, I'm firstly gonna explain what I think makes Steve's work stand out and then we're gonna learn from Steve about how he practices and improves. He gives a lot of really useful insights that we can use for our own practice regimen. Now, comic books started my interest in art and figure drawing. You know, reading them when I was a kid was just like pure magic. And among the comic books, Steve's artwork really stood out, and here's a few reasons for that. For whatever reason, when I was a kid, some comic artists would draw figures with a lot of heavily contrasted detail all over the figure. And every muscle and undulation would get the same heavy contrast, so your eye wasn't really guided anywhere. None of the important shapes or points of force and tension were emphasized. So amid all that contrast, the pose the figure was in lost its meaning. The storytelling was drowned in anatomical detail and the figures didn't look natural. Steve's approach was way more nuanced, more about the big important shapes, what the figures were doing. His figures were simpler and that made the characters more sophisticated and also more human. And similarly with color, a lot of comics had a whole range of saturated and heavy colors all over the place. I love Steve's use of color. He's ready to mute some of the colors and let the important ones, the ones needed for the composition, lets those stand out. And again, it's that ability to tell the story, fill the image with emotion and meaning while using a seemingly simple color scheme that shows true mastery to me. Steve would create movement in his composition, guiding your eye along important lines and focal points. The selective use of contrast and color we talked about work to create an impactful composition. So those things combined help to give that emotion and storytelling clarity to Steve's art. You know, it felt like he did justice to the characters and the stories, wrapped everything in this classic feel as well. You know, it wasn't about effects, it was just quality. And now the good news is that, according to Steve, achieving that standard was more about hard work and practice, which is something we can all do, as opposed to just an innate talent which normal people could never attain. So here's a quote from Steve that I think is really important for us to understand. One reason behind the constant and diligent practice is to see if I can take things that are difficult and work at them until they become more automatic or intuitive. Just like trying to ride our bikes for the first time, I wanted things that were extremely difficult and unnatural for me to become natural and less difficult. I also wanted to become less shackled by all the rules and theories that have cluttered my mind over the years so I could finally come full circle and ride the bike no-handed someday. Now I think that really summarizes an essential lesson for all of us that are learning to draw. All these techniques and bits of knowledge need to become intuitive for us to the extent maybe where we can't remember what it's like to not be able to see and do those things. Constructing things from basic forms, anatomy, color, once you have these skills built in, you're free to express yourself how you please, and that's a powerful place to be. So let's see how Steve took these technical and complex elements of drawing and made them intuitive. He has three primary ways that he learns. From studying his favorite artists, practicing things in his sketchbooks, and taking classes with good teachers. And I'm talking present tense because for him those learning processes are never finished. He said he started learning from his favorite artists when he was 16 and continues to study them now at 61. And you can see the influence of legendary artists like Andrew Loomis and Jack Kirby in his work. 
he continues to fill up sketchbooks with imagination and reference studies. He's got a library of books and folders of references about all sorts of things that the world has to offer, and he's continually picking out things to copy in his sketchbooks. He said everything from the human foot to a horse's nostrils. And one thing that struck me was how Steve draws for different purposes. Sometimes drawing is to learn, to overcome some challenge. Every day he tries to take things that are difficult to draw, break them down into basic forms and see what remains when the complexities are stripped away. He also draws things that catch his eye for the pure fun of it. He actually said, when I take breaks, I'll just scan the shelves for something to copy in my sketchbook. This also helps me take my mind off what I might be struggling with. Drawing uses a lot of mental energy and this helps recharge me when it starts to run out. That means that when Steve's tired from drawing, he relaxes and recharges by drawing more. But the crucial thing is that there are different types of drawing depending on your mindset and approach. I think it's a great idea to have different types of drawing practice in your repertoire. If all your drawing is just about hard training and pushing yourself, you might start to see drawing as arduous labor and, and lose that relaxing side of it. Or if you only ever draw in this relaxed way without taking on challenges or studying new things, you'll get stuck in a rut. So it's nice to be able to mix things up, to have relaxed drawing practice and then pushing yourself deliberate practice. Now, despite being a respected and award-winning artist for decades, Steve has a daily practice regimen. And that implies a lot of discipline, but it also implies humility. Artistic skills can't be taken for granted. He said, people can go backwards in life, and I've seen this happen to more artists than I can count over the years. One should strive to stay healthily self-monitored. He also emphasizes the importance of relearning basics. Just because you're experienced and have grasped things like anatomy, perspective, and so on, doesn't mean that you move on from those topics. He explained that each skill needs to be learned, practiced, relearned, and then practiced some more. So if you've started learning and practicing a fundamental topic and don't feel like you've totally mastered it yet, then don't worry, because you're doing great you're on that same learning cycle as Steve Rude. It's just that he's been round it so many times. Now, another thing worth noting about his continued learning is that he continues to find both learning and joy in life drawing sessions with life models. He said, you can produce a fairly finished work in an afternoon during these classes. You get the instant fulfillment of doing something that looks fresh and unlabored over. It's just you and the model testing yourself with whatever medium you choose to work in. So if you have access to a life drawing session, head down there. Steve Rude says it's good stuff. You can find the full set of answers from Steve about his art and his skills at lovelifedrawing.com slash steverude. And don't forget to check out Steve's Facebook page and website to see more.